Hello, everyone. So our lesson this week is on Judges 4 and 5. So I just want to do a little review from last week <clears throat> so you would know what's going on before your lesson. So last week was our first week of Judges, and we learned about the first three Judges. So there's Othanel. Um, his name means God has helped me. Um, two, Ehud. His name means love. Three, Shamgar, which means a stranger. So that was the first three. Um, today we're going to get, this week we're going to get into the fourth. Um, but I also wanted to review the cycle that the kids started learning last week um, that the Israelites go through um, in the book of Judges. So it's A, B, C, D, E. So A is abandoned. B is bondage. So the Israelites abandoned God. And then punishment for that was they were taken in by their enemies into bondage as slaves. Three, um, C, they cried out to God at some point. D, God sent the deliverer, which was a judge, when they um, cried out to finally cried out to him. And E, while the deliverer was alive, there was ease or peace in the land. So with those three judges, here is the information on that. So um, the Israelites abandoned God um, and went into bondage under Mesopotamia for eight years. And at some point, most likely the way some of the wording reads um, in these first several judges, until they get to the end, toward the end of that eight years when, when they, is when they cry out and then God sends the deliverer. So that's when God sent Othniel. And then afterwards they had ease or peace in the land for 40 years. So they were under bondage for eight, had peace for 40. Then after Othniel dies, then they repeat the cycle and they abandon God again. And they're taken into bondage by Moab for 18 years. So this time they go longer before they cry out to God. And then he sends the deliverer or the judge Ehud and they have ease while he is alive for 80 years. So it has increased. And then once Ehud died, then they repeated the cycle again um, and they fell into bondage to Philistia, the Philistines. Um, we do not know how long they were in bondage because there's just a very short sentence about this judge, but that is when um, they finally cried out to God for, I don't know how long it was, and God sent Shamgar, and we don't know how long they had peace or ease in the land before we get into Judges 4 and 5. So in Judges 4 and 5, we learn about Deborah, the judge, and Barak, or Barak, um, depends on which way you would like to pronounce it. So in this case, after Shamgar passed away, the people abandoned God again, and they were taken into bondage by Canaan um, for 20 years. And then they finally cried out to God, and God brought them Deborah with the help of Barak. And they had afterwards ease for 40 years. So through this process, we're already learning that God loved Israel too much to allow them to stray forever, like to just go do their own thing and not ever come back um, and try to bring them back to him. That is why there was punishment, why the bondage came is because they were sinning by abandoning God, but he didn't abandon them. He didn't say, I'm done with you. Um, go live however you want, um, but I'm done. Um, his mercy and grace are never ending. And we can see that through this cycle. Um, so the Israelites received punishment, but the ultimate punishment would have been God could have given them for sin was death. But instead he gave a punishment that was not as harsh. It probably did not feel that way to them, but it was not as harsh um, because he gave mercy and grace, but God gave mercy and grace. And we're the same as Israelites. How many times do we repeat the same cycle and so easily forget what God has done for us? So I'd like you to take a minute. You can do it now or at the end and just write down just a few things that God has done for you and maybe post them in different places so that you remember when you're having a rough day, a bad day, when you're struggling with something, you can be reminded of what God has done for you. Um, and as we continue, God has all, as God has always done for the Israelites, um, 
once they were back under Deborah, he defeated the enemy for them, um, even though they were outnumbered and at a disadvantage, okay, um, with weaponry. Like, they they didn't have everything that Canaan had. Um, but God made it clear that he provided the victory and he deserves the praise. So we need to acknowledge that as well, um, whether it looks like a miracle or not. Um, we learned last week in our lesson, the kids did, that God uses people in his plan. And we can definitely see that in the book of Judges. Um, each judge willingly followed and trusted God. And this week, we are learning that God's plan is to bring about his glory and our good. So God's plan will happen with or without us. And wouldn't you rather be a willing participant of his plan than to be left out and have punishment? So I just want you to ponder that. And we look forward to teaching the kids this week about the Judge Deborah. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you willingly, we hope, and that you would bring our hearts back to you moment by moment, day by day, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to share your love with rich kids, and um, may your love just pervade everything that happens on Sunday. In your name I pray, amen. We will see you Sunday.